got bait. Welcome back to our quest to determine which is better for flounder fishing in coastal bays, bait or lures. We're answering this question through hand-to-hand -hand combat fishing. After six hours of fishing, Team Lures is ahead with four flounder, while Team Bait has caught two fish. We only have two hours of fishing left, but before we get back to it, let's find out the answer to last segment's fishing quiz. So let's recap the question we had earlier. What is the most important factor to take note of the moment you get a fish on the line? A. Water depth. B. Water clarity. C. Strength of the current. Or D. Speed of your drift. The answer is A. Water depth, without any doubt. While flounder don't scold like some other fish, they do tend to hang out in the same depth zone to feed. So when you get a flounder on the line, it's important to take note of its depth. Four foot of water up here in the shallows. And concentrate your fishing efforts there. If the bite slows as the tide changes, start trying other depths. Usually, the flounder will be moving shallower if it's an incoming or high tide, and deeper if it's a dropping or a low tide. Hey, what are you doing with my jig rod, boy? You're a big oh, whoa, 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 this has bait on it. There's another cut goes up there, there's a sandbar between uh, the Okay. May the bait start catching. It's crunch time. The next couple of hours will decide who wins. Team bait or team lures? Baby, come on with it. Net. Got it. I'm going to mess up this net on purpose. Oh, great. Come on, buddy. Oh, it's another baby. Artificial oh, lure and it counts. Look at him. Oh, yeah? Well, you get ready to watch the boat, buddy, because we're ahead. Yes. Yo. Oh, shot is on. Is that artificial? Look at that. Look at that. Nice one. <laughs> Looks like we got dinner there, Len. Pretty fish, John. On artificial. Dad, we just had three bites right there. Really? Dave got bit off. I had a hit, and Mr. John caught one. Nice. That's hey, a good nice. fish right there. A little over 17. Solid 17. Nice. Put that in the live well with the others. I'm going to miss it on Four purpose. Four foot of water again, Len. Four foot of water. Second you know what? Four. It's not real big. It's snag. He's foul hook. There he comes. It's tiny. Oh, my god. Yeah, he's foul hook. I'm going to hit it. It's a point. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> it's a point. Lures are kicking butt. Boo! What's, oh, oh, what's, oh, the, what's oh, the score oh, now, Max? I don't know. What's the score now, I Max? lost track. You getting the net line? Here it comes. Nice one. Oh. Yes, sir. Artificial. That's a nice oh fish. Gosh. And John catches the biggest fish of the day. All right, I'm Five switching the foot, man. Go up there and shout. Way to go. You just had to pick bait. Pretty. I'm going to catch something for Thank you I'm for getting that ready for me. I appreciate that. I don't always catch the most when I fish with the Rudos, but luckily today I caught the biggest. We're getting close to the countdown, folks. There's only 15 minutes of fishing left, and I got the feeling they are going to be washing the boat today. I don't really have a partner. <laughs> Nine, Nine, eight, seven, seven six, six, five. five. Four, three, three, two, one. Ding dong! Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Artificials. Lines out. Time is up. And our day of flounder fishing has come to a close. Let's take a look at the results. In the last hour of fishing, Team Lures comes on strong. Lenny and John hit them hard, catching several more flounder, while the boys go without a single fish. We're going to award each team one point for throwbacks and two points for keepers. The boys caught two throwbacks and zero keepers for a combined total of two points. John and Lenny caught four throwbacks and two keepers for a combined total of eight points. But let's not rush to judgment here, folks, because we haven't considered the hassle factor of these lures and baits yet. Every lure and bait has some level of hassle associated with using it. 
For example, with these minnow, every time you want to bait up, you gotta get your hands all wet and slimy. I'm giving minnow a hassle factor of negative one. Now these jigs on the other hand, these are great because I can use them over and over again without having to rebait, but ooh, the juice they come in, this is some smelly stuff. Let me tell you, spill this on your clothes and you'll still be smelling it three washes later. Plus, a day's worth of gulp costs twice as much as a day's worth of minnow. So I'm afraid I have to give gulp a hassle factor of negative two. The final score is Team Lures 6, Team Bait 1. Boys, it's time to scrub. I can't believe my own dad and John Uckert outfished me. It's a shame. Lures crushed, just like I knew they would. Me and Max, we, uh, we could have won, but we decided to be the bigger man, let them win, because we, you know, we always outfish them. Hey, hey guys, yeah. do you guys have enough soapy water? I think we're good. Yeah, okay, you got no scrub brushes? I have some more if we need them. Okay. I mean, if there's two more, you guys can help. That'd be pretty nice. Well, you're right, but you guys lost the bet. Lors took the day, you know? Well, we can't help what happened. We could help, but we don't have to. Just wait. Next time, you guys will be the ones moping. Winning has its privileges. Join us next time on Got Bait. Now, John, I know you're known as a local flounder sharpie, but don't you have some offshore experience as well? Yes, that's where I got my teeth, actually salt water, uh, fishing offshore, uh, took the knowledge I learned over 40 years and wrote Offshore Pursuit, which is a book from A to Z, tells you how to catch all the different species. I have that book and I love it.